on his own on the streets. When he started boxing, he lost his first four fights, two by first round knockouts, and became a world titleist. As you can see, he gives away an inch in height. He gives away three and a half inches in arm length. They weighed in under the 108 pound limit, and both have put on significant weight, most especially Burgos, coming into the ring tonight. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Victor Burgos Will Grigsby fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. A case is a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards after four rounds have been completed, and you cannot be saved by the bell of any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, here comes Will Grigsby. Uh, he won a title at one point and then lost it, and uh, through his up and down career, Grigsby has remained a resident of St. Paul, Minnesota, the, the University Summit neighborhood from which he hails is a, an area for which he has a powerful bond, and that's one of the reasons he stayed there all those years despite the absence of boxing culture. Backgrounds among fighters we've seen recently. Once arrested for conducting dog fights, he bred dogs. Will Grigsby said to us, I'm an aggressive guy, I like aggressive dogs. And uh, if he can fight like a pit bull tonight, it'll provide terrific entertainment against Victor Burgos, who is himself a come forward fighter. Destiny has waited a long time for Grigsby, if in fact it has arrived. Destiny must have seemed infinitely far away years ago for Victor Burgos as he came from the most abject poverty imaginable in our hemisphere to make it to where he is today and now he's building a home for his family in North Tijuana. He's got that, that sort of immigrant, immigrant uh, state of mind, a kid who made his own way almost literally after both of his parents passed by the time he was 10 years old. We see this quite frequently in boxing. Young men who have been through the kind of personal challenge in their lives that make what they face in the ring seem less intimidating than it would be for the rest of us. Well, I think sometimes boxing is a sport that calls for such characters. <laughs> It's a refuge and an outpost, no question, as well as a pathway. All right, both fighters are in the ring for this 108-pound world title fight. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, where tonight, Don King Productions is proud to present an evening of world-class professional boxing for your entertainment, brought to you in association with the MGM Grand, HBO Pay-Per-View, and Universal's motion picture, Cinderella Man, starring Russell Crowe in a theater near you on June 3rd. All bouts sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Skip Avancino, Jr., Executive Director Mark Ratner. For this first bout, the three judges at ringside scoring this contest will be Adelaide Bird, Robert Hoyle, and Joseph Pasquale. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Kenny Bayless. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand, 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Junior Flyweight Championship of the World. <laughs> Introducing first, Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white with red. Official weight, 106 pounds. Professional record, 17 victories, including seven knockouts, with two defeats and one draw. From St. Paul, Minnesota, the challenger, former IBF junior flyweight world champion, Will Steel Grigsby. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white with blue. Official weight, 107 pounds. Professional record, 37 victories, including 22 knockouts, with 13 defeats and three bouts even. Thomas y Caballeros de Tijuana, Mexico, two-time 
world champion, the reigning, defending IBF Junior Flyweight Champion of the World, Victor El Acorzado Burgos. Okay, gentlemen. Trunks are okay here. Trunks are high. Any punch thrown in this area is considered a clean punch. Now, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to caution you to keep your fight clean at all times, protect yourself at all times, and what I say, you must obey. Touch gloves, good luck. Brenna Swati. Put these two men on the scale at the same time, <laughs> and you've got a small heavyweight. I think they're too small to be jockeys. You know? <laughs> Burgos' says trunks might fit on a real heavyweight, though. If you just loosen up the waistband a little bit, there's room in there for Monty Barrett. <laughs> Maybe even have seen Rockman on a well-trained night. <laughs> All right, first of a scheduled 12 here. Enough of the mirth about the heavyweights. It's already been a tumultuous month in boxing, given what has happened in the heavyweight division to James Tony and what happened last Saturday night in the 135-pound weight class, a fight that many will be talking about for years to come. crowd gets restless in the first 30 seconds of the fight as Grigsby decides to dance away from Burgos and get a look at Burgos's come forward style. Yeah, it's starting to look like a crowd agitator already. They don't want to see a lot of movement. They want to see some punches landed. Right, right. Step back, step back. But Will Grigsby hasn't fought much, out, so it's more out, for him to get out and fit himself out first. Right, That's right, probably why back. he's moving around so much. This window got a glimmer of public exposure about 10 years ago when Michael Carbajal out, was knocking out, people out. But uh, once out, Carbajal faded from the scene, then this weight class and the others surrounding it went back into oblivion. In the U.S. Around the world, it's a little different, right, Larry? Yeah. Work out, work out, work out. Don't hold it, work out. In Asia and in uh, Central and South America, there is some interest in oh, oh, stop. fighters oh, of this down. size. Well, most of your fighters of that nature are pretty light fighters anyway, so we, we can expect and we can understand why they have more of those guys workout, workout, than we workout, do. Workout, workout. We don't see many Philippine heavyweights. <laughs> That's right. We haven't even seen the great Mexican-American heavyweight yet. <laughs> but somewhere down the road, he'll emerge. Good jab by Will Grigsby, followed with a right hand over the top. Work out, fellas, work out. Both fighters have nicknames. Grigsby is Steel Will, it started out as Still Will, and then became Steel Will to reflect his hard life and hard experiences, and the idea that he can fight hard. Victor Burgos is called El Acorazado, which means the armored one, like a battleship. And right now, Grigsby is going at his armor a little low, Below the belt line, but Kenny Bayless breaks him apart. Yeah, but Burgos paid him back for that. So it was uh, an even trade? Yeah, it was pretty even. He hit him with a right hook to the to the left thigh. <laughs> Stop! Oh, let him up, let him up, let him up. Spectators probably have a tendency, Roy, to think that the low blow that hurts you is the one into the crotch, and anything else is irrelevant, but getting hit on the thigh is no picnic. Takes a lot out of those legs. Oh, good hook by Will Grigsby. And another good hook by Grigsby. Two big left hooks toward the end of the stanza may have won the round for Will Grigsby. Crowd didn't like it. And as we go to Burgess's corner where they speak Spanish, our interpreter is Ray Torres. Come into the in the middle and then the top. Don't, you know, don't, don't wrestle with him. Don't force it. Make sure you come back with that overhead right. When he comes in, move your ways. Move your out of the way. He's got nothing. He's just waiting for you. Okay, don't wrestle. Another one. This is your round. This is your fight. Okay? Stay in your game. Inside, let your hands go a little bit. Okay? If he's tying up one hand, use the other hand and clip him, under and over. Here you see Griggs dip down with that left shoulder and come with a beautiful left hook. Kind of grazed off the face of Bird Ghost, so it didn't hurt him bad, but it was a clean shot. Looked good to the judges. 
Total punches in round one. Grigsby, eight out of 34 by copy box count. Burgos, five out of 27. Grigsby, eight out of 22 power shots. If you followed the numbers, Grigsby won the round. Most right. likely, those two left hooks would have been the attention getters. And Grigsby probably needs to get that jab crank crunk up a little bit because he's a taller fighter. Grigsby's starting to open up a little more. Seems to feel as though he's gotten a sense of what it is Burgos wants to do and how he wants to do it. <laughs> Burgos doesn't look mysterious so far. Comes straight forward. Hasn't really worked to create angles. He's driving himself into Grigsby's wheelhouse to see what's there. Use a good left to right head movement, though, to get inside. So he's not coming straight down the pipe. That's a good thing. Work out, work out, work out. As they get into the ring and face each other, you get a sense that Grigsby is longer and has more range. Work out, work out. Work out. So it makes all the sense in the world that Burgos continues to work to try to get inside. And once he gets in there, he has to let those hands go. Hard right hand by Grigsby right down the pipe. Landed it, liked it, tried to follow it up. Fight is going to come down to how much condition Will Grigsby is in. Not always easy for a guy who's had 20 fights in 17 years. But Grigsby says no spinning, no spinning. that the importance of the occasion was plenty sufficient for him to get into the best shape of his life. As of this point, it looks like he may be in the best shape of his life. On the other hand, you're going against a guy with vastly more experience, many, many more ring appearances, and of course, more experience going the distance in Burgos. Well, I'll tell you what, Burgos better get closer than he is right now because he's taking a whacking from outside from the taller fighter. Yeah, Grigsby's picking his situations beautifully and landing shots when he wants to. Accurate punching by Will Grigsby, the counter puncher in this fight. Well, he should be the counter puncher, but he's actually not the counter puncher in this fight. He's the guy who's initiating the contact. All right. Well, thanks for straightening me out, because I know he should be the counter puncher. He should be, but he's not. He's initiating. So what he's doing is he's picking Burgos off as he comes in. Well, he's getting Burgos while Burgos is staying right there. See, Burgos is in range, but now he's attacking. And normally, Burgos is in range for Grigsby, not for himself. just began in the last 15 seconds of round two. Now let's look ahead to another big pay-per-view event coming up on June 25. World champion Arturo Gotti hits with thunderous power. The super quickness of Floyd Mayweather. Two-time world champ Floyd Mayweather strikes like a bolt of lightning. It's thunder and lightning. Gotti versus Mayweather for the Super Lightweight Championship. Saturday, June 25th, live on pay-per-view. Contact your pay-per-view provider to order. When thunder and lightning meet, you better take cover. And when Gotti Mayweather ends, stay on your sofa because it's only three weeks later that we're gonna bring you Bernard Hopkins versus Jermaine Taylor, live pay-per-view. Saturday, July 16, Hopkins risking the middleweight title. He's protected through 20 consecutive defenses against his youngest, fastest, biggest, strongest challenger yet. And maybe the hungriest. Maybe. Once upon a time, uh, Jim and Roy, back in the day, there were a couple of well-known uh, brothers who fought out of St. Paul. Um, Dell and Glenn Flanagan, but probably the best known uh, fight personality ever to come out of St. Paul um, was the artist Leroy Neiman, <laughs> who has uh, done many fight posters over the years, and most people are familiar with his great stuff in the world of uh, fun and games. Has he ever done uh, the definitive portrait of Larry Merchant? 
Well, he, he may not have done the definitive one, but he's done the only one. <laughs> he did one off of a television show we did one time and uh, sent it to me graciously. We've known each other a long, long time since I was uh, a newspaper guy in New York and Philadelphia. Since you were the boy genius sports editor of the Philadelphia Daily News. But that's another story as we get to round three between Will Grigsby in the white trunks and Victor Burgos in the blue and white. And what you see Will Grigsby doing right now is overstepping his jab. He's stepping too close to Burgos when he throws his jab. He's allowing himself to be back, in Burgos' punching range where at first he wasn't doing that. You made a great point, Roy, when you talked about Grigsby's stamina. He's fought a very good first two rounds, may have won the first two rounds, but how long can he stay sharp and keep his mental focus and hold up as the fatigue begins to set in. Burgos is way more accustomed to that. Good left hook. Grigsby catching Burgos perfectly as he leaned in. I'll tell you what, he's getting respect from Burgos because he's hitting him with some good shots, good power shots. Yeah, Burgos' best work has been to the body. Normally in a fight between a short fighter and a taller boxer, the boxer has the edge in the early rounds. Uh, when he gets tired and they can stand more toe-to-toe, -to -toe, the shorter fighter may have the advantage. But from what I'm looking at right here, uh, Grigsby is doing well on the inside when he chooses to uh, exchange. Well, the only thing for Grigsby that may hurt him is that these bombs he's throwing right now take twice as much energy to throw as a regular ordinary punch does. And if you're not a knockout puncher, and his record suggests that he's not, why bother loading up shots in the early rounds? You're right. Stop. You might be risking your energy later on. It's been five years since Will Grigsby last went 12 rounds in the ring. Surely, of course, he's done it in sparring. Meanwhile, undisputed world welterweight champion Zab Judah has reached the pinnacle of his career after his best performance ever, February 5, earlier this year, before a crowd of 22,400 in St. Louis. He beat St. Louis's Corey Spinks to take all the title belts in the welterweight division. And now if he can get past mandatory challenger Cosme Rivera tonight, it could set him up for some of the mega fights that he has longed for for the last couple of years. Zab Judah. And that's where we are inside the MGM Grand, world's largest hotel facility. We're expecting a crowd in the MGM Grand Garden Arena tonight of about 18,000 reflecting the remarkable drawing power of Felix Trinidad, how great it is for boxing that he came back from retirement last year. Through round three, CompuBox finds Burgos landing five out of 30 average per round, Grigsby 11 out of 43. Let's see if Harold Letterman sees it the same way. <laughs> Harold, how do you have it? Okay, Jim, exactly the same way. 30 to 27, three rounds to nothing, Will Grigsby. Jim, I gotta tell you, he's landing a clean of shots. The only thing that's gonna hurt Will Grigsby in this fight is the fact that he holds an awful lot, and Bayless may stop him from doing it. When Burgos gets inside, Will Grigsby just takes that right hand, puts it around uh, Burgos' left, and hangs on for dear life. So that's gonna hurt him, but other than that, three nothing, Grigsby. I have it two rounds to one for Grigsby. You mentioned referee Kenny Bayless there, Harold. Of course, uh, Kenny, a few weeks ago, was the referee for Antonio Margarito's destruction of Kermit Sintron here in the welterweight division. And Margarito is sort of the stealth weapon of the welterweight division. You, you, you don't want to fight him, but you know he's out there, and you might have to at some point if you're Zab Judah. Margarita, he sounds like something that'll get you in a pretty bad state of mind. Well, or a very good one, <laughs> depending on how you feel about it. But the bottom line is he is an all-action fighter with enormous confidence who comes in and never stops, and he just, he reduced a great prospect to a beaten fighter, a badly beaten fighter in Syndrome. Margaritaville. Now I see Barrow's Bar Bar getting a little bit, uh, and Burgos getting a little bit more aggressive. It yep. feels like he wants to get to Will Griggs a little bit more now. Wants to hunt him a little more, try to put more pressure on him. Because he's aware, I'm sure, that Grigsby's been picking his shots. Oh, and now they shot. trade and trade. Work out, work out. 
This happened a little bit in the last 15 seconds of round two, and this clearly is the fight that Burgos would like to make. Yeah, this is how most of the Mexican fighters want to fight anyway. They can take a few rounds to warm up, and then they're ready to go. And now I think he's at that point that he's ready to go. Burgos had a victory several years ago against Jorge Arce. Another small fighter from Mexico, now a star who fights pretty much this same way, throwing everything but the kitchen sink. I'm to my everything but the kitchen sink, you hear me? <laughs> and he'd throw that too if he could bring it if into the ring. get a hold to it. Work out, work out, work out. <laughs> Borderline punch by Grigsby, gets away with it. Burgos backs off. It was smarter Grigsby to back him up a little bit because he was starting to gain momentum. Oh, good body shot. And, and that was right on the belt line, and Kenny Bayless says nothing. Let's see if Grigsby chooses to retaliate at some point for that. He landed his left hook again. Now Burgos lands his left hook upstairs and downstairs. Right cross in there by Burgos. Grigsby finds some space and lands the right. Both fighters trying to steal the round when they hear the signal for 10 seconds to go, so at least we're going to get 10 seconds of action for every round. <laughs> Breathe in. Let's go. Come on now. The guy's right in front of you. He's right Let's go. Right the whole time. Listen to me carefully. He's coming now. You see him? I want you to catch him when he's coming in, okay? And when you're in there, work this motherfucker. Come on. When you... Okay, we won that round. He's coming up right in front of you. You heard him. Come on, with more pressure. We gotta work that body. He comes in like that with, with his hands low, so throw the overhand right. Here you see Burgos come with that overhand right that his corner just told him to throw, and that's why he wants to be close to Will Grigsby because those type punches land at close range and they're very powerful. <laughs> Throw it at a wild angle like that. The opponent get, doesn't get to see it coming. Not at all. Goldman round four. CompuBox found Burgos landing 23 out of 62, including 21 of 50 power shots. And you heard Al Benani say between rounds, he's coming. You got to catch him on the way in. Break! Step back clean, fellas. Come on, Eric. Come on. He started out with a good stiff jab there. If he could have kept that up, that would happen. But it looks like he reminded Burgos to jab. Grigsby had a reputation as a bit of a runner, but he is uh, standing in there tonight trying to fight like uh, one of the pit bulls he breeds or used to breed. Right hand lands upstairs for Grigsby. Digs a little left of the body. Excuse me, for uh, Burgos. Then he digs a little left of the body. Will Grigsby's had troubles in his life, but is determined to make up for that by working with the young people of his neighborhood in St. Paul. He has begun opening a youth center there for them and has a dream of putting together a permanent facility where he can talk to kids about drugs, violence, alcohol, the things he's seen on the streets around him. Fighters have great credibility when talking to young people. Isn't that true, Roy? Yeah, because they respect what we do for a living. The fact that we go out there man on the man or one on one. It's not a gang of us. It's one of us at a time. We out there in front of millions of spectators and going at it. Hard out, all heart and soul. Nobody worried about what happened to you. It don't matter if we die up in that fight. That's just how we feel about it. And Even if they can't define that. honor, they can understand that exactly. there's honor in that. Exactly. All kids can understand that. Work out, work out, work out. Work out, fellas. Grigsby still showing great energy and backing Burgos off there with a, fus a fusillade of good punches. In fact, Burgos is a little wobbly right now as Grigsby nails him against the ropes. Oh, it's up, punch, it's up, punch. Oh, One more good body shot could set up something big, but now Grigsby backs off. Yeah, he better back off and save his energy because you can believe me, Burgos is not going nowhere yet. <laughs> Big 
15 minutes ago, the man who collected all three belts in the 154-pound weight class before jettisoning them to move north to 160 for this fight, Ronald Winky Wright entering the arena. Wright has had an unusual distraction in this last week before the fight. He developed an infected ingrown hair on his neck and eventually had to take antibiotics to fight the infection and get the swelling to go down. As you can see, it doesn't look too bad as he walks in tonight. Roy, how often do fighters get hit in the neck where uh, that infection is? They get hit in the neck a lot, but a hair infection, a hair bump infection is not nothing that's gonna cause him to win or lose a fight, so that won't sell me, you know? I mean, Just I the fact that he had to else. take antibiotics, see a doctor, go to a plastic surgeon on Monday, see another doctor later in the week, still a mild distraction. Mild distraction, but a true champion is supposed to be able to come through that. Round six begins between Victor Burgos in the blue and white trunks, Will Grigsby in the white with red trim. Grigsby had a great round with power shots in the fifth round, landing 16 out of 28, extremely accurate. Burgos was hunting and pecking, landed only seven of 35 power shots. So Will Grigsby made a strong comeback in the fifth round after Burgos had generated a lot of energy in the fourth. And that was his best round, but he started it out with a good crisp jab. Grigsby landed two hard clean, left hooks back, to the body, Burgos. and Burgos came back with a left hand of his own that was just below the belt line, near the thigh. A purpose punch, if ever you saw one. And now Burgos lands another left right at the same spot, and he's doing it on the other side of Kenny Bayless. And he's very smart because he's got to keep digging into this guy's body. He knows this guy haven't had, hasn't had a lot of action lately, so he wants to try to wear him down. If he can survive this early onslaught, he knows toward the end of the fight that he would be much stronger than Will Grigsby. Oh, big right hand upstairs by Burgos. Grigsby handles it. Little left hook by Burgos lands. Not much impact. Work out, work out, work out. Work out, fellas. Grigsby has not been working his jab to set stop, stop, stop power back. shots up the way he did in the last round. And that's giving Burgos a chance to start things off. Now they trade body Head. shots inside. Stop. And this is the fight that Grigsby does not want. He can't win his inside fight. His arms are too long for this. Well, he talked about fatigue, and in oh, this oh, round, stop. after he expended energy in the fifth round, it appears as though a little lull is set in. But he's gotten enough respect from Burgos that Burgos isn't exactly bearing in to try to take full advantage. Burgos is small. He's going to take his time. Good body Good shot. Good right hand body shot by Burgos. Dug it straight into the solar plexus. Those are the type of things he wants to see right now. He's not interested in trying to knock him out right away. He's ready for the stop. long haul here. Let go. Thirty seconds from the halfway point of the fight. Stop. Watch your head. Watch your head. In case you have just joined us, we are at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. And you are watching the 108-pound world title fight between title holder Victor Burgos in the blue and white trucks. He's from Mexico. Will Grigsby from St. Paul, Minnesota, is giving Burgos all he can handle as they trade shots <laughs> down the stretch in the sixth. HBOPPDay.com. That's, let me say it again, HBOPPD.com is the destination for boxing fans. Log on to our site for your daily fight week updates. Come on, we gotta get smart, uh huh? Give him some water. Come on, use him and bob and wave. Yeah, and then the overhand right. How do you feel? Come on, take some air in. We, we're doing fine. Come on, fight at your, your face. You either turn the right uppercut or the left uppercut. Coming out from this angle that we sit at just below the ring, 
I can see some loose threads coming from uh, underneath the left leg of Grigsby's trunks. It may be from his protector, but it also may be from the 17-year-old underwear <laughs> that he wears, the last gift that his mother gave him before she died of MS. Break! Step back, come on, here we go, fellas. Step back, come on. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim, five rounds to one. 59, 55, Will Grigsby. Jim, I gotta tell you something. He drops that right hand beautifully on Victor Borgos. In other words, he's the taller guy. When Borgos rushes in, he drops his right hand down, and he nails a brush on the jaw, and you can't miss it. I don't think the judges can miss it. He's landing the cleaner shots. He's winning this thing on clean punching. 5-1, uh, uh, Grigsby. Just picked off Burgos with a perfect left hook, because Burgos was starting to make his move in. I have it four rounds to two. Oh. There's another drop right hand over the top, and a left hook in return by Burgos. And I believe Victor Burgos' left cheek is starting to swell from the right hands that uh, Will Grigsby has dropped on him. Oh, good body shot and hook to the head. That was nice by Grigsby. If Grigsby can keep this up, he's definitely going to win this title. Absolutely. I just, I just don't know how long he can maintain this because he's been so inactive. It's the energy burn thing. If he can keep going like this, he's winning the fight. And Burgos knows it. Well, he's taking a little bit out of Burgos now. You see Burgos backing up. That's not characteristic of him. Absolutely not. And I think he's giving Will Grigsby a little confidence. Stop. Burgos's corner wants him to pressure Grigsby. Instead, Burgos is spending long stints of time standing hey. there looking at Grigsby, waiting to see what'll happen next. Landed a couple of looping rights in here. What I, what I do like that I see is I like the fact that Grigsby is starting to go to Burgos' body now. Oh my gosh. Work out. Good uppercut. Al Banani was asking Grigsby to land uppercuts between rounds. I'm thinking I haven't seen a good uppercut in the fight, and Grigsby just delivered one. So in addition to his other qualities, you can tell that he hears his trainer. Yeah, look, and he's throwing these punches with uh, serious intentions. Punches up. There's an uppercut by Burgos that lands. He got in some good body work down the stretch. And just moments ago, sporting a brand new spiky hairdo, Felix Trinidad walked into the arena. Felix has been in a very gregarious mood this week, laughing, smiling, having a big time, parading through the hotel lobby, spending a half hour, 45 minutes or more, signing autographs for fans. Felix Trinidad loves being back in the spotlight after two and a half years away. Still trained by his father, Felix Trinidad Sr. Only one loss in his entire career, that to Bernard Hopkins, September 29, 2001. Earlier we mentioned that uh, this weight class, the 108-pound weight class, got some attention several years ago when Michael Carbajal was fighting in this weight class. Will Grigsby fought Carbajal in Carbajal's pro debut. Carbajal's come and gone. Grigsby's trying to win a title tonight. Well, he took a lot of time off. He didn't fight too much, so he didn't wear himself out. Carbajal went through a lot of good, tough fights. And like they say, a horse that craps fast don't crap long. Yeah. But it was exciting why it lasted. Oh, was it ever. I mean, he fought a, a high-risk physical style, which was just unforgettable on television. There's a good hard right hand by Burgos as he drives Grigsby back. We're in the eighth of a scheduled 12, and it's possible 
possible that Grigsby has won six out of seven rounds on some scorecards. More likely he's won four or five of the seven rounds, but it's, it's almost impossible to fathom that Grigsby isn't ahead in the fight to this point, and probably with a good working margin on the cards. Looks like he's taking this round a little off. He didn't come out aggressive this round. He started out slow. He's not jabbing that much. He's not looking to do a lot. He's just staying away counter, so. Hasn't finished a 12-round fight since the year 2000. Burgos finds himself standing and boxing with Grigsby in the eighth round of a fight in which surely he wanted to put pressure on the opponent. That in itself is enough to tell you that Grigsby's winning the fight. Yeah, it is because he's got Burgos completely out of his game right now. Absolutely. He's got him standing up and looking for opportunities to box. And last round, he teed off on him really, really well because he was standing up. Safety first round for Will Grigsby, which has turned out pretty well, because Burgos hasn't really taken advantage of the opening Grigsby has left here for him to go out and seize a round. At the end of the day, you probably would have to score it for Burgos at this point, but there are 10 seconds to go. Let's see if Grigsby can, Grigsby can steal it. I don't think he's interested in stealing this one. Nope. He's decided it's, it's okay to just go on to round nine. Time! Deep breath. That nose ain't bleeding no more. Deep breath. I don't need it. They said you don't need that one. Thank you. Yeah. Listen to me, Cap. Come on. I want you to swallow a little bit of water now. Come on. Yeah. The uppercuts, man, are there. Now, this kid's just in good shape. You hear what I'm telling you? Más el uno, dos, y el gancho izquierdo arriba. Ya se está quedando. Cuando se agache, pártelo por el medio, levántalo con tu upper. Ya sea de zurdo o de derecha. ¿De acuerdo? ¿Qué tal la cosa? Cuando lo tengas pegado, vos lo trabajas, lo a dos manos. Lo dejas a dos manos. No, no, no hay problema, hay que buscarlo, hay que buscarlo. Es trabajo nomás, hay que hacer trabajo. Vamos bien. Hay que hacer trabajo. punches have landed so far in this fight according to copy box count only 35 of them are jabs most of those landed by the man in the white trunks with the red trim will grigsby of st paul minnesota who may be headed toward a world title at 108 pounds he came out this round with his one two combination right off top so maybe he's back oh good shot by the other guy Oh, wow. Sports writers in uh, the Minneapolis area have been apt to write that if a an upper Minnesota fighter could win a world championship in boxing, anything in the world is possible. <laughs> you might even see hockey Stop. return, Stop. for Stop. instance, or something else that's regarded as completely out, the realm, out of the realm of possibility. Burgos lands a little left hand, digs inside. Grigsby's Stop. punch rate has gone down. But he's in no danger of having to fight Burgos' fight as a result of it yet. No, but he got to be careful of giving up all these body shots because this can stop, really stop. take a faster effect than he expects Watch it to, head, especially with his long layoff or his long periods of inactivity. Yes. Rigsby landed one left hook. Burgos threw four punches to the body. Stop, stop. Come on, fellas. Here we go. Here we go. Watch your head. Let's go, Will. Let's go. Burgos is now becoming the busier fighter throughout each round. Grigsby tends to land one or two, and now three, four. Burgos comes back with a fusillade of his own. Stop! 
but when he opens up, Grigsby still landing the sharper punches here. Because uh, uh, Burgos is coming straight down the pipe, so he's throwing that right hand right when you see Burgos start to come at him. Victor Burgos, as though they banged stop, heads, stop. and maybe Burgos has gotten a little nick inside the hairline. Or maybe with that left hook. Ooh. Hard right hand by Grigsby. Perfect shot. Stop, 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 stop. Burgos needs to stop letting him land that shot. He needs to be coming in at an <laughs> angle. I mean, he's just walking stop, straight stop. forward up the middle, and Grigsby, it's target practice with that right hand. Yep. There it lands again. Stop, stop, stop. Nine minutes to go in this fight. Here's his mouthpiece. Give me some rinse on the mouthpiece. This is a 10 round. Just breathe in. Breathe in again. Hey, Will, he's outworking you a little bit, okay? These are close rounds, okay? Please use that left uppercut, okay? Use that left uppercut on this kid. All right. You hear what I'm telling you? Close your eyes. Come on, kid. This is 10 rounds, okay? You gotta give me 10, I don't need it. 10, 11, and 12. You understand what I'm telling you? 10, 11, and 12. But box him. Please don't stand in front of him, let him get off first. If he comes, don't wait to count a shot right there. Give me some more water. Yeah. Take a slug. Okay, come on, let's go. Entrame por el lado izquierdo. Entrame por el lado izquierdo. Al Banani, former Miami policeman, great lover of boxing. We've seen him with a lot of different guys, including most notably the puncher, Randall Bailey. Al Banani giving Will Grigsby some very good boxing advice there as he goes into these last three rounds. Harold, how do you have it through nine? Okay, Jim. 88, 83, seven rounds to two. Will Grigsby. Jim, I, I agree with you that uh, Victor Borgo's probably pulled that round eight. But I gotta tell you something. What Victor Borgo's charges in, Will Grigsby hits him the straight shots. Borgo's is coming in wide. A lot of those shots don't land in the scoring area. In other words, Grigsby picks him off on his forearms, on his elbows. So you gotta give him credit for good defense. But the straight shots are all coming from Grigsby, and he's still dropping that right hand on him. Well, Grigsby got a little right hand, but back straight away, and Burgos was able to reach out and hit him with a left upstairs. That's why they teach you never to pull straight back. Best against a short fighter. Just because they teach you never to pull straight back doesn't mean that gifted guys like yourself won't do it every <laughs> once in a while. Yeah, we do it every now and then, but... Uh, you, Muhammad Ali. But by and large, it's not something you want to try. No, it's not. Unless you have on, ex on, exceptional, on, exceptional skills or reflexes. Yeah, like I say, you, Muhammad Ali, some guys could get away with it, but nobody gets away with it forever, do they? <laughs> nah, not at all. And usually you hear that going in. Sometimes, though, you'll see a fighter do a great job of backing out at angles and covering himself defensively all night long until he gets tired. And then once he gets tired, he does all the wrong things. Yep, and that's when it tells him. Come on, fellas. Come on, fellas. Let's mix it up. Come on, let's mix it up. Come on, Will. Work out, Will. Work out. Work out. You keep expecting a massive flurry of energy from Victor Burgos. You keep expecting Burgos to try to turn this into an all-out brawl at some point, but he just hasn't been able to, to bring it to the surface. And I will tell you why. Just now, they were in a good combination, good exchange, and Grigsby, uh, Will Grigsby hit Burgos with the best body shot, and Burgos had to back out for a minute to regain his uh, So it's the win. quality of Grigsby's punches that, exactly is, is. that is preventing Burgos from creating the fight he wants. The jab offsets him, and those body shots that he's throwing in return, Burgos is not expecting that. Work out, work out. 
Oh, good uppercut by Grigsby. And another uppercut, and a straight right hand, and a left hook. And he is tagging Burgos with big stuff. That was a great rally down the stretch by Will Grigsby. Mark your calendars. May 21, live on HBO. It's heavyweights Lehman Brewster and Dan Trigolata trying to clear up some of the heavyweight picture. Let's hope neither of them tests positive for anything. June 11, HBO's Boxing After Dark, rising star Miguel Cotto takes on the man who beat him at the Sydney Olympics, Mohamed Abdullayev. One week later, light heavyweights Glenn Johnson and Antonio Tarver meet in a rematch of their December fight. Johnson won that one by a razor-thin margin. And June 25, HBO Pay-Per-View brings you a classic matchup of styles between Arturo Gatti and Floyd Mayweather for Gatti's 140-pound title belt. Coming up in the next fight, undisputed world welterweight champion Zab Judah in St. Louis on Feb 5. He fought the fight his father and trainer Yoel Judah has been waiting for for Zab's entire career. Brilliant performance, destroying Corey Sphinx in a ninth round TKO before a rabid, huge, hometown Sphinx crowd of 22,400. Burgos lands a, an upstairs shot with the right hand. Grigsby has an insurmountable lead on Letterman's scorecard and maybe on all of them. Took a lot of confidence to go in St. Louis and do what uh, Zab that, Judah did. Zab Judah well, but did. he's never lacked for confidence. Oh, no, never, none it's at all. It's been focus and concentration, which have sometimes been lacking, right, Roy? Yeah, that's right. And when he put the whole thing together, we saw a beautiful outcome last time. And the kind of performance that would make anybody in the 147-pound neighborhood, including Costa Zoo or Oscar De La Hoya or Shane Mosley, at least apprehensive about fighting a southpaw with power like Jeff. Exactly. And Costa's still at 140. He's not coming to 147, is he? Well, maybe De La Hoya lures him there. Now, that could happen. With a little thing called market power. <laughs> the dollars do, ten, do tend to get bigger as you go up the scale, don't they? They, they do now. Besides, for Costa, leaving 140 might be a good way of avoiding a showdown with Floyd Mayweather Jr. if Mayweather gets past Otura Gatti. Yeah, but I mean, it's like pick your poison. You want De La Hoya or you want Mayweather? <laughs> De La Hoya is older. <laughs> yeah, but bigger. That's true. Greg Speed pops Burgos with the jab, and now Will is starting to use his feet to protect what would seem to be a commanding lead. And I think it's about time for that now. I think it's time for him to stop taking chances. He's smart. He has fought a brilliant fight here tonight. He's done the unexpected. He came out. He maintained. Uh, he showed that he's definitely in good, great condition. And uh, the little guy is not giving up. Don't get me wrong. But Grigsby has fought the best fight to this point. On Letterman's scorecard, at least, he doesn't need to win either of the last two rounds. He needs only to stand up and finish the fight to win it. You know, even though Stop. Grigsby has had very few fights, given the length of his career, it's still remarkable for Stop. a 35-year-old guy <laughs> in this low, low weight division to be performing at a high level. And you have to give him credit for that. Good left hook inside by Grigsby, and now Burgos begins to produce the kind of energy first that he would appear to need to turn the fight around. Suddenly, they're fighting Burgos' fight. And Grigsby again tries to discourage him with hard shots, a quality left hook in the closing seconds of the round. And you gotta give me everything that you got, you hear me? Everything, here. Where's your speed punch? What, your headbutt with him? Come on. Come on. This is for the championship of the world. Come on. The winner of this round wins the Give me a towel. You got to win. This is the last round. We got to go. When he, when he uh, hold you, hit him with the other hand. You need this round. You win this round, you're the champion of the world. On the inside, keep your hands up. Dig this guy. Come well, on. Follow out. Touch right. Close everything. Give it all you got. You close this round big because you need it. 
todo lo que hago. Let's give it all. That's right. 108 pound world champion, the world titleist, Victor Burgos looks discouraged as round 12 begins. Good luck, Willis Wante. And despite the fact that Will Grigsby would appear to have a commanding lead on the scorecards, you heard his assistant trainer, Dennis Presley, who has trained him much of his life in St. Paul, say, you need this round. The winner of this round will win the fight. Roy, did he get the proper instructions to fight hard this round? I think he, I think he did because I think they don't want him to relax on this kid and this kid knock him out. So I think that was smart in instructions. Um, if he fights, he takes a lot out of Victor Burgos. But if he sits back and let Victor come, he give Victor confidence and Victor may catch him. Yeah, so it's a Burgos. calculated gamble, but in your view, the right one. I think it is because he's, he appeared to be the strong of the two fighters at the end of the last round. Yeah, and Burgo, but Burgos doesn't look like he's got the kind of power that could hurt Grigsby. I mean, he's hit him some clean, clean shots and Grigsby hasn't even, uh, well, blinked twice. Now, if anything, the power edge has belonged to Grigsby. Oh, it has. Who that has been able to stop Burgos in his tracks, has been able to hurt him on a couple of occasions, certainly has gotten his attention frequently with that right hand and with left hooks. Grigsby popping Burgos with three jabs as he moves his feet and forces Burgos to pivot, pivot, pivot. Brawlers don't like to do it. No, they don't like to move their feet. They like to have them feet planted so that they can punch. A frustrated Burgos chasing and waving. And Grigsby stops him with another combination. Grigsby got this Larry Holmes jab. <laughs> Now Grigsby has decided to sit on the presumed lead. Well, one thing Grigsby has shown is a very strong mind. From beginning to end, with rare exceptions, he's been fighting his fight and has found moments throughout the fight to stop Burgos from doing what he wanted to do, to control him, to remind him that he's the man in charge. They say the challenger is supposed to go in and aggressively take the title from the champion. Uh, and he Will did, Grigsby's done. He did that so far tonight, and I have to give him credit. Oh, stop, stop. Come on, here you go. So Minneapolis uh, sports writers tell us that if Grigsby wins this world championship, it means that the Vikings are headed toward a Super Bowl victory. <laughs> but they better start buying their tickets. Question, the Minnesota, the are going question back in Minnesota is, would they ever get a Super Bowl champion before they got stop, stop. a prize fighting champion? <laughs> they didn't expect this answer. I can't honestly tell you who the other champions are in this low, low weight division. used to be here, but then he moved up. Good fight. And a stirring performance by a young man who has been through tremendous difficulty in his life. He's had a stint in prison. He's had rough times on the streets of St. Paul. But he believed in himself long enough to get this done. Harold, how'd you score it? Okay, Jim. 117, 111, uh, nine rounds to three, Will Grigsby. Jim, I, I, I just thought he controlled the fight. I mean, Victor Burgos trying to get inside, trying to rough him up, trying to come over the top with hard right hands. Easy victory for Grigsby. Every time Burgos would rush him, Grigsby would either hit him with a great uh, left jab or drop the right hand on him. But Will Grigsby on the clean of punching on a better ring generalship. Almost every fighter we've seen Al Banani train for Don King Enterprises was a puncher. So it was interesting to see Al provide great boxing advice to Will Grigsby throughout the fight. Wonderful to know that your trainer is capable of doing both. And we're gonna take a look here in a minute at the faces of the three people who will choose a winner in this 108 pound title fight. Adelaide Bird of Nevada, her father, I mean her father, her husband Robert is a well-known referee here. And he ha she has previously scored a Victor Burgos win. Robert Hoyle scored Jeff Lacey winning uh, 
fight against Williams through six rounds. Not a lot of noteworthy fights on Hoyle's dossier. Joe Pasquale from New Jersey scored Ricardo Lopez, a 117-111 winner over Grigsby. Let's see if he has Grigsby by a similar score over Burgos. An educated guess or semi-educated guess. It'll be closer than we think. Larry, if at this stage of your career you're only semi-educated, then we're never really going to get to educated, I guess. <laughs> Michael Buffer standing and ready to announce the official decision in the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Grand, we go to the scorecards. Joseph Pasquale scores it 117-111. Adelaide Bird has it 116-112. to 112. And Robert Hoyle scores it 118 to 110 to the winner by unanimous decision and new IBF Junior Flyweight Champion of the World, Will Steve Grigsby. So Larry Merchant's education in boxing continues as the scores compute to an exact average equaling Harold Letterman's 117-111. They weren't closer after all. Yeah, well, maybe it's I'm overeducated. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> hey, listen, we're all still learning every day, but Will Grigsby, at age 35 and after a tumultuously difficult life, has risen to the top of his own personal pyramid, winning a world title at 108 pounds, winning it for the people on the streets of the Summit University region, or neighborhood, I should say, in St. Paul, Minnesota. Final copy box numbers will show significant advantages for Grigsby, both overall and in power shots. Overall, he landed 67 more punches while throwing 15 fewer, a 12% higher connect percentage, and the edge in power shots slightly more pronounced, as here he lands almost twice as high a percentage as Burgos, landing 52 more punches while throwing 59 or 69 less. Good stats for Grigsby. Now let's go back up to our host, James Brown. <laughs>